Uh, radiation fears have led authorities in Taiwan to ban food products from Fukushima and four nearby prefectures. But last month, inspectors found that products from those areas had made it through customs, and officials are tightening import regulations in response. Taiwanese health care authorities will now require labels on all Japanese food products to identify the prefectures they came from. They'll also require radiation checks on certain items, including food for infants. They say they'll release details on the measures and implement them as early as next month. The new regulations were first proposed last year, but they were put on hold due to opposition from Japan. Taiwan is the third largest importer of Japanese foods after Hong Kong and the United States. A court in central Japan has ordered the operator of the Takama nuclear plant not to restart its reactors. It's the first time for a judge to issue this kind of injunction in the country. The ruling asserts the reactors are not safe in regards to earthquakes, even though regulators said the plant is in compliance with requirements. More from NHK World's Noriko Okada. Residents broke into applause outside the Fukui District Court. They filed the case in December. They say they won a historic victory. To completely stop reactors three and four at the Takahama plant. It's the best decision we could ever imagine. Executives at Kansai Electric argue they've taken sufficient measures to restart the two reactors at the Takahama plant. But the judge decided the executives were too optimistic. They assumed a quake beyond predicted levels would not occur. All of Japan's 48 reactors remain offline. 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident forced the industry to reform its governance. The Nuclear Regulation Authority started examining plans two years ago under new stricter rules. So far, 24 reactors from 15 plants have applied for reinstatement. Last September, NRA officials approved two reactors at the Sendai nuclear power plant. The operator hopes for a restart later this year after NRA on-site inspections clear the facilities. In February, the Takahama reactors met the NRA requirements, making it the second plant in the country on the way to a restart. But the court has cast serious doubt on NRA standards. NRA officials say an accident could occur at the plant even if it meets the standards. They maintain a plant is never completely safe. Today, the judge ruled the NRA's new requirements are too lax. He added that stricter standards should be introduced to ensure severe accidents never happen again. A key point of contention is how strong a quake could hit the plant. Three faults ran nearby. The operator initially submitted 550 gals as a quake strength figure. NRA officials rejected the figure as too optimistic. The utility raised it to 700 gals. It then got the OK from the NRA. But residents objected. it. They point out more than 4,000 gals came about in an earthquake that hit the country's northeast in 2008. They also note the operator had said the facility might be damaged by a quake over 970 gals. The residents argue the Takahama plant would likely melt down if it were struck by a big quake. Leaders in Tokyo say the government will closely watch what the operator does. The NRA is an independent organization, and it's taken plenty of time to judge if the plant meets what people call the world's toughest safety standards. The government will respect the assessment. The ruling will not affect our position on restarting the plant after it gets approval. The Takahama plant cannot go online unless the injection is overturned. Kansai Electric executives are considering filing a request to suspend the order. NRA officials say the injunction will not affect administrative procedures like screenings and inspections. The operator plans to continue steps to restart reactors. But one thing is clear, 
the court's decision has brought into question the country's safety standards. It may reignite a national debate about nuclear energy in Japan's future. Noriko Okada, NHK World. A new poll by NHK suggests people in Japan are divided over changing the constitution. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has indicated he wants to amend the charter. NHK conducted the survey by telephone over three days. More than 1,000 people agreed to take part. About 33% of respondents said they agree with the idea of amending the constitution. 31% said it's unnecessary and 27% were undecided. The survey also asked about the government's policy on nuclear power plants. Officials want to restart facilities whose safety is confirmed by regulators. 47% of people polled said they oppose the idea. That compares with 22% who approve. And 25% said they haven't made up their minds about the issue. And officials with the International Atomic Energy Agency are hoping to move forward with their investigation into Iran's program. They're looking into allegations that Tehran is developing nuclear weapons. An IAEA official said negotiators from the two sides plan to restart talks on Wednesday. The group suspects Iranian researchers of carrying out tests of explosives related to their nuclear program. But the investigation has been stalled because officials in Tehran have failed to provide information about the activities. Iran, no. Iran needs to regain international trust by clarifying questions over the possible military dimensions of its nuclear program. Iranian authorities had promised to provide their information about the alleged test by the end of last August. Officials in Japan and the United States have agreed 
on the need for a Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. But key details must still be worked out. These include tariffs on farm products and automobiles. And negotiators from the two countries will resume working-level talks on the pact in Tokyo on Wednesday. They're hoping to reach bilateral agreement before Prime Minister Shinzo Abe meets with President Barack Obama in Washington later this month. But the minister in charge of Japan's strategy, Akira Amari, says Tokyo will not make concessions ahead of the summit unless the U.S. agrees to do the same. Amari said Japan does not consider the summit a deadline. He said he wants to focus on narrowing the gaps between the two sides to smooth the way to higher-level talks. We won't have talks at the ministerial level just because the summit is coming up. Those will have to wait until negotiators at the working level are able to resolve some of their differences. Amari said U.S. negotiators are mistaken if they believe that Japan will make compromises during the next two weeks.